we will start a video session starting with the McLeod a clinical examination of the respiratory tract this is very basic and you have to listen to every word of the examination and you have to watch every maneuver I advise you to see this video many times at home and revise it and revise it many many times it is very essential that you have to learn all techniques, maneuvers, questioning, position of the patient and the doctors. So we will have this video session, which is for about 13 minutes, regarding respiratory tract clinical examination. for tobacco staining, peripheral cyanosis, and finger clubbing. This is most commonly associated with lung malignancy, fibrosis, or chronic infection. There are four features. Loss of the normal angle between the nail and the nail bed, increased nail bed fluctuation, increased bulk of soft tissue over the terminal phalanges, and increased nail curvature in later stages. Hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy includes finger clubbing. Is this so? No. And also painful swelling of the wrists and ankles. Check for tremor in the hands. Could you hold your hands out for me? Bend your wrist back. Watch for a few seconds. A coarse flapping tremor is seen with severe ventilatory failure and carbon dioxide retention. Look at the neck for accessory muscle use. And this is JVP. called astrexis. Look at the tongue and lips for central cyanosis. To detect lateral shift of the trachea, gently place the tip of your right index finger into the suprasternal notch. This can be uncomfortable, so be gentle and explain what you're doing. The distance between the suprasternal notch and cricoid cartilage is normally three to four finger breadths. Feel for a tracheal tug, which may be found in severe hyperinflation. Please, can you take a deep breath in? Use your hands to detect chest expansion, which should be symmetrical. Watch how your thumbs move. Reduced expansion indicates abnormality on the same side. Percussion allows you to hear the pitch and loudness of the percussed note and feel for post-percussive vibrations. Percuss sequentially over corresponding areas on both sides of the chest. Percussing over normal lung produces a resonant note. Over solid structures, for example the liver or heart, a dull note is produced. Place the palm of your left hand on the chest with your fingers slightly separated. Press the middle finger of your left hand firmly against the chest aligned with the rib over the area to be percussed. Strike the center of the middle phalanx of your left middle finger with the tip of your right middle finger. Use a loose swinging movement of the wrist. 
remove the percussing finger quickly so the note generated is not damped. Work down the chest from side to side comparing left with right. Please could you take deep breaths in and out with your mouth open. Most sounds are best heard with the bell. Auscultate left and right alternately comparing equivalent positions to ensure that localized abnormalities are not missed. Don't ask the patient to take exaggerated breaths for a prolonged period as this may cause dizziness or even tetany. Listen anteriorly from above the clavicle down to the sixth rib and laterally from the axilla to the eighth rib. Avoid auscultation within three centimeters of the midline as these areas may transmit sounds directly from the trachea or main bronchi. Assess the quality and amplitude of the breath sounds. Identify any gap between inspiration and expiration and listen for added sounds. Bronchial breathing is a high-pitched breath sound with a hollow or blowing quality similar to that heard over the trachea during tidal breathing. Bronchial breath sounds are found when normal lung tissue is replaced by uniformly conducting tissue and the underlying major bronchus is patent. This happens with pulmonary consolidation from pneumonia at the top of a pleural effusion and over areas of dense fibrosis. Please could you say 111 each time I put my stethoscope on your chest? 111 111 Over normal lung, the low pitched components of speech are heard and high pitched components are attenuated. Over consolidated lung, in pneumonia for instance, the numbers are clearly audible. Over an effusion or area of collapse, they'll be muffled. One, one, one. Whispering is not heard one, over normal lung, but in consolidation the sound is transmitted, producing whispering pectoriloquy. One, one, one. Oscar take each side alternately, comparing findings over a large number of equivalent positions. One, one, one. Next, examine the neck and chest from behind. Please, could you sit forward for me and swing your legs over the edge of the bed? Could you look straight ahead? I'm going to examine your neck. Examine for cervical lymphadenopathy. Systematically work your way through the lymph node groups. Start anteriorly with the submental and submandibular, and then the upper, middle, and lower cervical nodes. Also palpate the posterior triangle along the border of the trapezius muscle and the supraclavicular fossa. The post-auricular nodes are felt behind the ear and the scalene nodes are above the first rib. Please could you tilt your head to the right. This helps relax the sternocleidomastoid, allowing you to palpate behind the clavicle. And again, to the left. Place your index finger between the clavicle and the sternocleidomastoid muscle and press down gently onto the first rib. Thank you. Inspect the chest from the back, looking for deformities of the spine or chest wall or thoracotomy scars. Repeat the assessment of chest wall expansion posteriorly. Place your fingers along the ribs and watch your thumbs to track the motion. Thank you. Could you cross your arms in front of your chest? Because the chest posteriorly, for the superior part of the posterior chest wall, ask the patient to fold their arms, abducting the scapulae. Do not percuss near the midline, 
as a dull note is produced from the solid thoracic spine and paravertebral muscles. Map out any abnormal areas by percussing from resonant to dull. A pneumothorax will produce a hyperresonant note. Percussion over a solid organ or consolidated lung produces a dull note. Fluid, such as a pleural effusion, produces a very dull note, described as stony dull. Basal dullness due to elevation of the diaphragm is easily confused with pleural fluid. Please could you take deep breaths with your mouth open. Repeat auscultation on the back. Again, compare left with right and listen at a good number of positions to ensure you don't miss a localized abnormality. As well as breath sounds, you may hear added sounds. The most common are crackles, wheeze, and rubs. Crackles are interruptive non-musical sounds and can result from a number of different pathologies. Concentrate on when they occur in the respiratory cycle and their character, whether fine, medium, or coarse. Sometimes, added sounds can be due to bubbling in secretions in the larger airways. If you suspect this, remove your stethoscope and ask the patient to cough. Secretions in larger airways will be cleared. Crackles caused by disease of bronchioles or alveoli will not be affected. Wheeze has a musical quality and implies airway narrowing, commonly in asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Time the sounds in relation to the respiratory cycle. Wheeze tends to be louder on expiration. Inspiratory wheeze implies severe airway narrowing. The loudness of wheeze is not useful in determining the severity of airway obstruction. In the most severe bronchospasm, the chest may be silent. Measuring the peak expiratory flow rate is a bedside test and an important part in the assessment of asthma. Each time I put my stethoscope on your chest, please could you say one, one, one. One, one, one. One, one, one. We have discussed how increased vocal resonance can demonstrate sound transmission through consolidated lung. The other sound that you may come across during auscultation is a plural friction rub. This is a creaking sound, similar to that produced by bending stiff leather or treading in fresh snow. It is produced when inflamed parietal and visceral pleural layers move over one another. A rub is best heard with the stethoscope diaphragm. It may be heard only on deep breathing at the end of inspiration and beginning of expiration. A rub is normally associated with pleuritic pain and may be heard over areas of inflamed pleura in pulmonary infarction, vasculitis or pneumonia. If the pleura adjacent to the pericardium is involved, a pleuropericardial rub may be heard. Pleural friction rubs disappear when an effusion separates the pleural surfaces. One, one, one. One, one, one. Thank you. Please could you swing yourself back round and lie again on the bed. This is again Lastly, part of the respiratory. The legs for edema, signs of deep venous thrombosis or erythema nodosum. Thank you. Okay. Best uh, uh, light is that okay? Any student have got a question or? 
point to be clarified. Please do ask. As I said, you have to check this video again and again at home. It's very essential. Every word, every maneuver, every technique, you should follow it exactly as you have seen it. Uh, some of you will say, Doctor, we don't see it in hospital like that. This is the classical teaching. You have to learn like driving. You have to follow all rules uh, during uh, driving. But later on, you can, it's up to you. But this is the classical clinical examination of the respiratory tract. Now. حتى حتى لا هو يتدخل بال يعني مجرد انه يكون ستاند ستوب هيك يعني ثابت حتى الدكتور ياخذ راحته بالفحص في استفسار اخر طبعا راح نشوف ثلاثه او اربع فيديوهات اخرى ريجاردينج بريث ساوندز which is very important محمد سيجينا شوفنا الفيلم الأول أيضا regarding breath sound طبعا كلها تم شرحها لكم هذه سابقا بس اليوم راح نشوفها على شكل فيديوهات Hi and welcome to this video on lung sound Lung sounds, or breath sounds, refer to the sounds heard when air moves through the respiratory system. These are easily identified by auscultation or listening to the lung fields with a stethoscope. The lung sounds are classified according to the sounds involved during inhalation and exhalation phases of the breath cycle, taking note of the pitch and intensity. Types of abnormal breath sounds include wheezing, bronchi, which sound like low-pitched wheezing, strider, crackles, also known as rails, and these may be further classified as fine or coarse, and pleural friction rub. Let's start with wheezing. Wheezing is caused by the narrowing of the airways and is associated with asthma, bronchitis, pneumonia, COPD, smoking, heart failure, inhaling a foreign object into the lungs, or an allergic reaction. Wheezing sounds may occur during inhalation or exhalation and are continuous with a musical quality. The classic wheeze refers to the high-pitched whistle-like sound heard during exhalation as air moves through a narrow or obstructed airway. Listen to the following wheezing lung sounds. A wheeze may also be lower pitched, having a snoring or moaning quality, in which they are referred to as ronchi. Ronchi sounds have a continuous snoring, gurgling, or rattle-like quality. Ronchi occur in the bronchi, as air moves through tracheal bronchial passages coated with mucus or respiratory secretions. This is often heard in pneumonia, chronic bronchitis, or cystic fibrosis. Ronchi usually clear after coughing. Strider is a high-pitched musical sound heard on inspiration, which resembles wheezing. When listening with a stethoscope, if the sound is louder over the throat, it is strider, not wheezing. Air is moving roughly over a partially obstructed upper airway. Strider is caused by something blocking the larynx, such as a person choking on an object. Strider can also be heard in a person with an infection, swelling in the throat, or laryngospasm. You may frequently hear strider in children, as they are more likely to choke and more likely to get childhood infections like croup. Strider can indicate a medical emergency if not enough oxygen is able to get through the airways. Listen to the sound of strider. <laughs> Previously termed rails, 
Crackles are sounds that are heard in the lung field that has fluid in the small airways. Crackling can be heard on inspiration and expiration. Early inspiratory and expiratory crackles are heard in chronic bronchitis. Late inspiratory crackles may indicate pneumonia, CHF, or atelectasis, a complete or partial collapse of a lung or lobe of a lung. They are broken down into fine crackles and coarse crackles. Fine crackles are high-pitched, brief, discontinuous, popping lung sounds. Fine crackles sound like wood burning in a fireplace or cellophane being crumpled. Fine crackles usually start at the base of the lungs, where there is fluid in the lungs. As the fluid fills the lungs more, fine crackles can be heard closer and closer to the top of the lungs. Coarse crackles sound like coarse, rattling, crackling sounds, but are louder, longer, and lower in pitch than fine crackles. They are described as a bubbling sound, as when pouring water out of a bottle, or like ripping open Velcro. Coarse crackles are often heard just in certain spots in the lungs, possibly only on one side or in different spots on both sides. They are usually caused by mucus in the bronchi. Listen to the sound of coarse crackles in a patient with pneumonia. Sometimes they are called crepitations. Pleural rubs occur when two inflamed pleural surfaces rub against each other during respiration. This is often heard in pleurisy, or inflammation of the tissues that line the lungs and chest cavity. The sound may be continuous or broken, and creaking or grating. It can be described as the sound of walking on fresh snow or rubbing leather together. The sound of pleural rubs occurs every time the patient inhales and exhales. Plural rubs come and go, are not altered with coughing, can usually be localized to a specific location on the chest wall, and will stop when the patient holds their breath. Remember, if there is a loss of breath sounds in an area, it probably indicates a pneumothorax, or collapsed lung, in which there is no air movement in that area. Let's go over a quick review. Wheezing is a musical noise during inspiration or expiration usually louder during expiration, and continuous. Ronchi resemble low-pitched wheezes. They are rumbling, coarse sounds, like a snore, during inspiration or expiration, and continuous. It may clear with coughing. Strider is a high-pitched musical sound heard on inspiration, resembling wheezing. However, the sound is louder over the throat due to a partially obstructed airway. Crackles are high-pitched, discontinuous sounds during inspiration, not cleared by a cough, and further defined as fine and coarse. Plural friction rub occurs during inhalation and exhalation, may be continuous or broken, and creaking or grating. They stop when the patient holds their breath. Thank you for watching this video on lung sounds. For other useful tips, check out our other videos. <laughs> Uh, any question? You have to know that crackles, when you ask the patient to cough, they will not <clears throat> disappear. While uh, bronchi, because of a fluid in the bronchi, uh, when they uh, cough, ask the patient to cough, they disappear. Um, friction, the plural rub, if the patient stops breathing, the sound will stop. So you have to follow these fine points. Okay, any question, any comment? We will see another video which is very interesting, also about the breath sounds. You have to remember the normal breath sounds and the added sounds. The added sounds are the abnormal, which are the wheeze and crackles, uh, plural rub, ronchi, etc. Right.
You can read these notes. No gap. There is gap.
Any question, any comment? It's a sort of repeat to what we have said, and it's just the new versions. <clears throat> What's up, guys? In this video, we are going to talk about press sounds, lung sounds, and everything you need to know about auscultation. Are you ready? Let's go! breath sounds. These are the sounds that come from the lungs during inhalation and exhalation that can be heard during auscultation. When an abnormality is heard in a patient's breath sounds, this indicates that other health issues may be present, such as asthma, COPD, foreign body obstructions, accumulation of fluid, heart failure, infections, inflammation of the airways, and pneumonia. Now, of course, there are many other abnormalities. These are just a few examples. But by listening to the quality, duration, and intensity of breath sounds, healthcare professionals like me and you can learn a lot more about a patient's condition in order to provide the most appropriate forms of treatment. So what is auscultation? Auscultation is a simple, non-invasive procedure that involves the use of a stethoscope to listen to the sounds produced by the body. And for the sake of this video, of course, we're focusing specifically on the lungs. A stethoscope amplifies the sounds within the lungs so that we can hear and have an idea of what's going on with the patient's condition. When performing lung auscultation, the bell or diaphragm of the stethoscope is placed on the patient's chest and or back. So both the patient's front and back and both of the patient's lungs should be compared to one another. So what are the types of breath sounds? Now whether you're a respiratory therapist, respiratory therapy student, or even if you're a nurse or a part of a different medical professional, Knowing the different types of breath sounds is extremely important. Now, especially for respiratory therapists and physicians, but arguably just as important for nurses and other professionals as well. So first and foremost, you have the vesicular breath sounds. Now, vesicular is just a fancy way of saying normal breath sounds. These are low pitch sounds that you would expect to hear as air flows through an open airway. The sounds are usually soft and can be heard throughout the inspiratory and expiratory phase of breathing. And then we have adventitious breath sounds. These are the abnormal breath sounds that occur over the lungs and airways during auscultation. Adventitious breath sounds are commonly associated with a wide array of heart and lung conditions. The type, duration, location, and intensity of each adventitious breath sound can help medical professionals diagnose and treat medical conditions. This is why knowing the difference between each type of abnormal breath sounds is so important. And that leads us to the next part of the video, which is the lung sounds that you should be familiar with. First and foremost, we have crackles also known as rails. These are short, explosive lung sounds that are commonly heard as air moves through secretions in the small or middle airways of the lungs. So when crackles are heard during auscultation, this can be associated with fluid or secretions in the lungs, more specifically in the small or middle airways. Crackles can occur both on inspiration and expiration, but are more common during the inspiratory phase. There are two types of crackles that you should be familiar with. First, we have fine crackles. These indicate that fluid is in the smaller airways. They have a higher frequency and a shorter duration. These are often heard in patients with CHF and pulmonary edema and can be treated with diuretic medications such as Lasix. Then we have coarse crackles. These are lower in pitch and longer in duration. They are caused by secretions in the larger airways. They are often referred to as bronchi, which is a breath sound that we will talk about in just a bit. Next up, we have wheezes. 
wheezes are high-pitched abnormal breath sounds that are heard as air flows through a narrowed airway. They sound kind of like a whistle and are most audible during the expiratory phase of breathing. So there are a few different types and causes of wheezes and that's what we're going to discuss now. So if bilateral wheezing is heard in both lungs, this is an indication that bronchoconstriction is present, which can be treated with a short-acting bronchodilator like albuterol. On the other hand, when wheezes are heard in only one lung, this is referred to as unilateral wheezes, which indicates that a foreign body obstruction is present. And in this case, a bronchoscopy would be indicated. And another common cause of wheezes is that they are heard when patients are fluid overloaded. So for example, in patients with CHF and pulmonary edema. We created an entire video about wheezing, so definitely check that out if you're interested. I'll drop links down below in the description. So the next type of breath sound is ronchi. This is an abnormal breath sound that can be heard when air moves through larger airways that have excess amounts of mucus or secretions. These lung sounds are often low pitched and are audible during the expiratory phase. The main difference between ronchi and wheezes is that ronchi sounds are low and dull while wheezes are high and squeaky. As a respiratory therapist, when you hear ronchi, you should recommend suctioning or bronchial hygiene therapy. Next up is Strider. Strider is a high-pitched lung sound that is heard when there is an upper airway obstruction. It is most often heard in the inspiratory phase of breathing. Several medical conditions can cause Strider, including croup, epiglottitis, post-extubation laryngeal edema, and foreign body aspiration. Strider can be treated with cool mist and racemic epinephrine. But in severe cases, which would be a medical emergency, intubation and mechanical ventilation would be indicated. Next up is diminished breath sounds. These are lung sounds that are heard when there is decreased air movement in the lungs. So a lot of times, patients with COPD or an acute asthma attack will have diminished breath sounds because they aren't moving much air in and out of the lungs. Then, after a bronchodilator is administered, if you listen to their breath sounds again, you'll hear wheezes. This is actually a sign that the patient has improved because the bronchodilator is working and has opened up the airways some compared to what it was. This is just something to keep in mind for patients with diminished breath sounds. And last but not least, we have the pleural friction rub. This is a loud, grating sound that is heard over the lungs when inflamed pleura rub together. It is caused by decreased levels of fluid in the pleural space. And this lung is often heard in patients with pleurisy. Now I already briefly mentioned most of the causes of abnormal breast sounds, but real quick, let's do a quick recap. So crackles are lung sounds that are caused by air moving through secretions of the small or middle airways. Wheezes are caused by air moving through a narrowed or constricted airway. Ronchi is caused by air moving through secretions in the larger airways. Strider occurs when an upper airway obstruction is present. Diminished breath sounds are heard when there is decreased air movement in the lungs. And a pleural friction rub is heard when inflamed pleura rub together due to decreased levels of fluid in the pleural space. Now again, there are hundreds of causes of abnormal breath sounds. These are just a few of the common examples that you should be familiar with. So now let's talk about bronchial breath sounds. These are hollow lung sounds that can be heard in both normal and abnormal conditions. So these sounds are normal when heard over the trachea. However, they are abnormal when heard over the lung fields. So during auscultation, if you place the stethoscope on the patient's trachea, you will hear bronchial breath sounds and this is normal. But if you're listening to the lung fields and you hear bronchial breath sounds, this is an abnormal finding. 
So for example, let's say you're auscultating a patient and you hear bronchial breath sounds over the right lower lobe. This is a common finding in patients with pneumonia and it indicates that consolidation is present. So that's just a good tidbit to remember about bronchial breath sounds. So now that we've covered all the different types of breath sounds, lung sounds, everything you need to know, real quick, let's go through the steps of performing auscultation of the lungs. So first and foremost, you want to explain the procedure to the patient to establish trust and rapport. Stand close to the patient to gain access to the target area. And in this case, of course, it is the patient's chest or thoracic area because we are listening to the lungs. If the diaphragm of the stethoscope is cold, be sure to warm it up by rubbing the surface just to avoid shocking or startling the patient with this that cold surface point. of their skin. Place the earpieces of the stethoscope in your ears and adjust them as needed. Hold the diaphragm firmly against the patient's skin with enough pressure to have the patient take slow, deep breaths through an open mouth. As they do that, Listen to the sounds and try to identify their intensity, location, strength, pattern, and duration. Always listen to the patient's anterior side first. Start at the top of the lungs, then move downward to the lung bases. Then proceed to do the same thing on the posterior side. Compare the right lung to the left lung and also compare the anterior to the posterior side. And last but not least, document the findings in the patient's chart. Now remember, in the hospital, if it doesn't get documented, it never happened. And that leads us to the final portion of this video. What is the best stethoscope for auscultation? Now in order to perform auscultation and listen to breath sounds in the most effective way possible, you need to get your hands on a high quality stethoscope. You can use Our any, your own. is the 3M Littman Classic 3 stethoscope. This one's our favorite basically because you get the most bang for your buck. You get a high quality stethoscope that is great for listening to breath sounds at a reasonable price compared to the more expensive cardiology models. If you're interested, I'll drop a link below so you can check it out. I'll also put links to our full list of reviews of the best stethoscopes for medical professionals. Alright guys, that wraps up our video on lung sounds, breath sounds, and auscultation. I truly hope that this video was helpful for you, and if you want to support the channel, do me a big favor and hit that like button. It actually really helps a lot, and I greatly appreciate it. Also, be sure to subscribe because we have some more helpful videos that will be coming out soon, and you don't want to miss them. That's it for this one. Thanks again for watching. And okay. This is sort of summary to what we have said, to what we have listened again. Uh, the videos are uh, giving uh, the same information in different ways. So I hope uh, by collecting all this information. We have only just one video, which is uh, for about two minutes, less than two minutes, and then we finish the lecture, is whispering pictorial leque. What is whispering pictorial leque? I will simplify it to you. This is your stethoscope. When you put it to the chest and ask the patient to whisper, say words or numbers in very low sound. Say, for example, one, one. Uh, so the patient will say one, one. The vocal, res uh, the vocal resonance will not be heard by your stethoscope because it is very low sound. If there is consolidation, mass, when the patient will say one, 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 you will hear it because the sound will be conducted by the mass or by the consolidation to your stethoscope and you are going to hear it. This is another way, this is another way to detect a mass or consolidation. Right? Whispering pectoral leque. 
I will see a video for it. This will be the last video. at home, listen to them carefully, they will be the basis for respiratory tract infection. This will stay with you for the rest of your career as doctors. They will not be changed. This is a classical, basic. Uh, the, uh, this will stay with you uh, for a long time, and uh, uh, you have to learn them carefully, step by step, word by word, and when you master them, that's it. So by repeating the examination on your cell, on your friend, on one member of your family, you will get experience. And by repeating them, you will master them. If you do them for one time, uh, that will not be enough. As a beginner, as junior trainee, you will get the uh, control of such maneuvers. Sometimes during examination, especially during the OSCE, some students will become uh, troubled, uh, not systemized, not clear about the, uh, uh, the steps how to do it. You have to follow them step by step in coordinated way, in organized way. So uh, watching these videos, 
listening to the wording, listening to the descriptions, by that you will master the clinical examination of the respirator. Any question, any comment? If you don't have, you will have a break. Dr. Muntasar uh, will come within one hour to start his uh, two sessions. Okay? So see you later, inshallah. Allah